We're here! Another lazy day adventure. Yeah, and this time we are not doing a hike. We are doing kind of a combined walking tour and like just exploration of... The Dalles, Oregon. This is a personal connection to the Dalles for me is this is like halfway from between Portland and Walla Walla where I went to uh, college. So I always stopped here, you know, and I'll explain more of the connection a little bit later, but. But we've never, I have, I've been here maybe once, but I've never looked around and there's actually like a lot of history here. So it'll be really fun. We're at the Fort Dallas Museum. This is our first stop. And this is, uh, As it says on the sign, yeah. one of the Oregon, one of Oregon's oldest history museums. Continuous operation since 1905. And it's housed actually in this old house that used to be, I think, sur the surgeon. Oh yeah, because it says surgeon's quarter. <laughs> uh, We're just reading the signs <laughs> to you guys. This is a great vlog. <laughs> um, it's pretty inexpensive as well. So yeah, only five bucks. So if you're ever in da the Dallas. There you go, more signs for us to read to you. <laughs> <laughs> this marks the site of the commanding officer's house of, the, of Fort Dallas, 1850. Pretty crazy. This is a copy of an 1857 watercolor from just right after these buildings were built. So this oh, is wow. our building right here, hiding behind the trees. This is the double officer's building here under construction. And when you go out in the yard, you'll be able to see the remnants of the foundation in the yard with some great big pine trees growing in the <laughs> middle of it. So we were talking about the uh, Lewis and Clark exposition. These cabinets are actually from that. Yeah, 1905. And this is some of the score from the students. Yeah. This is the first clock ever in the town. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Before they didn't know time. So when I used to work at the museum, one of the docents there uh, asked me if I ever kept my hair to, and would donate them to her because she liked to make hair uh, embellishments like this. It's a cross made out of hair. Right? Yeah. Wow. And there's a bunch of them. <laughs> Yeah, the center bouquet is family hair and made from wire things. Bucking contest, bareback riding, and lady brock ride. Betsy, are you going to enter the lady bronc riding contest? I probably will. I'm pretty good. Yeah. After I smoke my Alsatian pipe. Ooh, let's get a pass out of that. Oh, that's pretty fancy. Should we do covered wagons again? Let's do covered wagons again. This map was surveyed in our hometown of Eugene, or Eugene City, as it was referred to in 1863. Right down there. All the other houses around, like the fancier houses, yeah. burnt down pretty early on. And it's suspected that it's because the chimneys are actually built on the inside. The um, other ones, these oh, are. Yeah, yeah, this one uh, was like smaller, and so they had to put the chimneys on the outside, and that's why they think it survived. Yeah, we have this to thank, this chimney. But apparently, they went like way over budget building these like super fancy homes here, <laughs> and so they were cut off from like being able to build a fire fighting unit or like any type of. Yeah, for that. yeah. <laughs> so. Don't over budget. And here is the historic front of the house. Where Elsa and Anna live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elsa is coronated right inside. <laughs> they could figure this out in 1901. I know, Excuse we should me, be able to figure it out now. Yeah. Hey, that was a great museum. That was a great museum. If you are ever, and like, it was amazing because the uh, director of the museum came out and just gave us basically a tour of like yeah, the whole like area. Yeah, like a personal tour of the Anderson homestead, yeah. which was, you know, there was the actual surgeon's quarters, which was the museum, and then the homestead was 
and cool. like a whole plan for what they want to do in the future. It was amazing. Yeah. It was very, very cool. It pays to visit when nobody else is in the museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now we're going to go uh, to Cirrhosis Park, yes. which is hopefully not a skin disease. Yeah. Cirrhosis Park is also home to the coolest play structure ever. It even has like a dragon. Now, where do you go to eat in the Dalles when you're hungry? Burgerville. Best shakes, for sure. Definitely. All right, we are starting the walking tour using historical places of historic interest. First stop is Clint's. It's the oldest bookstore in Oregon. Yep. Right here. According established to director earlier as seventh oldest in the nation. Which is pretty crazy. It was established in 1870. So it pays to Google. Uh, what did you find out about the oh. historic information about so this? It wasn't originally called Flint's. It was called I.C. Nicholson. And there's a little caveat to the, uh, or should we say a big asterisk to yeah. the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oldest, oldest claim. bookstore, blah yeah. blah blah, is that it's the oldest continually operating bookstore. So yeah. that is a little bit different. Yeah, okay. All those seasonal bookstores that have been going on since 1650. I know. These are the Oregon Trail bathrooms. Famous pioneers stopped here along the route once they had finished their long trek across the country. Okay, rating of the famous pioneer bathrooms. Uh, I would say I'd keep going on the Oregon Trail. I wouldn't be satisfied with that. I mean, you're gonna hit the river anyway, so you can yeah, always you just, might go as well there. just go there. Go on the river. But we have made it. Yep. The end of the Oregon Trail. I thought we were just starting. Well, two people have already died from dysentery. Oh, well. So. I'm probably not <laughs> my chance. <laughs> All right, this is where we're gonna start the Dallas walking tour. Woo! I'm ready to walk. So the personal history behind this is. Uh, when I went to Whitman in Walla Walla, uh, my, my parents were going to move me in, of course, and they were driving, uh, so, you know, you can't go from Eugene to Walla Walla in just, it's only like six hours, so you can easily do it in a day, but I guess since we were moving in, we wanted to be there right at the start of the day, so we stayed in the Dalles first, and then, uh, the next day we were just going to make the short trip to Walla Walla from here, it's only like two hours. So anyways, we were in here. I was nervous as heck uh, before, you know, moving and moving to college. And I was trying to, uh, I don't know, like have fun with it and everything. So we, we came here for dinner and we were walking around. And while I was extremely nervous, my parents found the walking tour. And we're like, oh my God, this is so interesting. Let's go on this walking tour. And so we went to like three or four of the murals and read three or four of the signs. At which point I was like, this isn't what we're here for. We're here to move me into college. And I had a little bit of a freak out, uh, which I had, you know, several of those uh, throughout the whole moving to college process. <laughs> so, it wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah, I guess this trip is to atone for that freak out for my parents. So this, once again, this one's for you and you, you, you guys, mom and dad. We don't want to go up to the porch because it looks like somebody lives here, but there's a sign that we think this is where the person who built that church that we just saw lived. So, can't be confirmed, <laughs> since we don't want to trespass, but. It's either that or a famous Sean Connery uh, <laughs> impersonator. What are you talking about? Let's put you on camera here. <laughs> well, we all know about the famous Sean Connery impersonators that come from the Dalles. There's about 20 of them now, and uh, some of them are still living here today, so mm. this could be a site of those. And are they all named Gates? Since uh, it says N.H. Gates' house. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm not doing so well in terms it's of It's a little hard to directions. tell what houses are historic and what yeah. houses are just houses. And not all of them have plaques. And then the one that did have a plaque... Wasn't on the list. Yeah, it wasn't on the list, so... 
we'll, we'll keep at it, but we may start making stuff up if we need to. All right, at least then we found another spot. This is the Methodist Parsonage. Hmm. Boom, documentation. This is another one that doesn't seem to be on the list, but is a great example of American four square style. Oh, yeah. boy, you're just so knowledgeable. It's a two wood frame building. Another one that also looks to have a modern use and a historical meaning. Fortunately, it looks it's like a business that's closed. It's now by a bunch of squares. Yeah, okay. Another source of confusion. This one has the exact same branding of a sign and is part of the it's tour. It's on the list, so we made so, it back. A little weird. It is the Colonial Revival style of architecture, built in 1909. Wow. And it was sold to the owner of the Hotel, of hotel Dallas, which was like the hotel in this whole area. People would come here from all around stop on their trips. It was a huge hotel, huge like banquet and dance room, everything. So pretty cool. One thing holding us back from seeing more sites is this map is actually pretty confusing. You can't adjust it to where you're it. standing. Yeah, to where you're standing. So we're doing the best we can. They, there should be like a Google Maps yeah. app for this so I can just walk and the little arrow will follow me. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't figure that out. Yeah. People are going to start to think like, we're lying about me actually going off to college. Yeah, never before really this. happened. No, it never really happened. It was actually, you know, the Behavior Institute. It's the Wasco Kavotni Kuvort Albos. Oh, yeah, there you go. Probably it's supposed to be a yes. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like a V. Actually, I think it's uh, Wasco CO5 NT CO5. Five, Ert. Yeah, it could just ho, be a numeral. Oh, five. They have five hoes in here. So, another interesting fact about the Dells, and I just touched bird poop, <laughs> is that they actually were the first and only site of bioterrorism in the U.S. Um, this uh, here actually uh, is kind of pointing to that. It's dedicated to all who steadfastly and unwaveringly opposed the attempts of the Rajneesh followers to take political control of Wasco County from 1981 to 1985. And Betsy, who were the Rajneesh? It was, <laughs> it was a cult in this area, I think. And they uh, actually poisoned the salad bars in a lot of the restaurants around here and affected like over 700 people. Wow. Which is like actually really serious, but kind of bizarre at the same time. Yeah. You should just do what I do and not eat salad. It's the Carnegie Library. Oh man, I've already heard of this place. So this uh, was like one of thousands that Carnegie invested in to build. Um, the one in Eugene is also a Carnegie library or was started as one. Um, this one, I don't know how old it is. Let's walk up to the sign and read it in front of the camera. Nineteen ten. Oh man! All right, another sighting. Right next to this weird alley is an opera house. Woo! Yeah. The Phantom of the Opera was actually reportedly to be from, from this opera. Oh, really? I heard it was his cousin. Okay, could be. Yeah, I don't know. His American buddy. Yeah, his American buddy, his pen pal. Okay, so we're not in the Dells anymore. We're no. back. Yeah. And uh, mainly because our battery ran out. Yeah, we've learned our lesson. <laughs> we'll buy us a second battery. <laughs> Uh, what do you think of the trips to the Dalles overall? I really liked uh, the Fort Dalles Museum. Was it the Fort Dalles Museum or just the Museum of the Dalles? No, Fort Dalles Museum. Okay, That's I what really it's... liked that. Yeah. And I thought it was, I mean, it was super cool that the museum director walked us around the whole place and yeah. uh, he was super knowledgeable and I felt like that showcased their history the best of anything that we did. But what did you, what did you think? Uh, I like that certainly and certainly the personal tour that we got. Uh, the walking tour, I have to say, I think I got it right as a, you know, emo high school senior going on a college <laughs> freshman. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not the best signs and you know, the signs are basically 
Oh, this was built in this style of architecture at this time and it was controlled by this person. It's like, well, that one wasn't so good. Uh, I certainly wouldn't do it right the night before your kid is gonna go off to college. No offense, mom and dad, but uh, I also, I, I wouldn't. They could I, improve it. Yeah, they could improve it. I wouldn't have that as your main reason for visiting Dallas. I go to the Fort Dallas Museum and the, there's some other stuff that we didn't do. Yeah, there's a lot of other stuff there. There's a whole museum that's about the Oregon Trail that's really cool. Um, and so I would definitely go there. I just think the walking tour is something. If you're downtown and yeah. you see a couple plaques, it's great to go there. Otherwise, you're yeah. probably good. Some, and lesson learned, sometimes your emo teenager is right. All right, <laughs> we'll, we'll end off with that. Uh, but thanks for coming along on another adventure. Yeah, super fun.